men of America, farmers, steel workers, office workers, truck drivers, you men who share in any part of the American plan of life, this is your war. Never in all history has the call for defenders of freedom been so urgent as at this moment. Brave men are needed, stout-hearted men, men who would rather fight to stay free than live to be slain. If that's the way you feel about it, your place right now is with the Navy. Your Navy. All the warships, all the fighting planes America can produce count for nothing without men to man them. There's a big job to be done, the biggest job we've ever known. But if we stick together, that job will be done. In all its 144 years, our Navy has never before faced a task as tremendous as the one it now faces. With convoys threading vital lanes across every major maritime route, with task forces operating in three oceans, with planes and smaller surface craft patrolling every mile of coastline where liberty is still intact, the Navy's job grows greater with each repeated Axis challenge. Every man who wants to do his part in the fight for freedom must face an important question. In what service can I help my country most? Decide now while you can still choose the service you want to join. Choose one that will give you action, thrills, adventure, travel. A service where you live a rugged outdoor life. A service that will make you an expert in a skilled trade. Fit you to do a better fighting job now, to land a better peacetime job later on. Choose the United States Navy. Remember, up until you have actually been sworn into some other branch of our armed forces, you may still volunteer for naval service. It's great, this Navy of ours. Great both for you and for your country. Great because of its ships and its planes. The present fleet, battle tried and alert. The new fleet building, cruisers, destroyers, submarines, aircraft carriers, torpedo boats. Ships that the industrial might of America is laboring night and day to produce. The Navy is great, too, because of its officers and men. Officers selected for leadership and trained to the tradition never to give a command which they are not prepared to carry out themselves. And under them, men picked for courage and rugged physical stamina. Men like Parker, Hanson, and Smith. Heroes not once, but every day as America's Navy fights in the North Atlantic, in the down under waters of Australia, in the Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, or against the Japs in the far reaches of the Pacific. Your name, too, can be written with honor in your country's history, along with names like Navy machinist Donald K. Ross, pharmacist mate Lionel Baker, aviation machinist mate Leonard Wagner, men who have fought and are fighting today for American victory in this battle for the four freedoms of man. Men make the Navy. They make it strong, welded into smooth, powerful fighting units. But the Navy also makes men, for the prime requisite of every Navy man is a sound, healthy body. You don't have to be a perfect physical specimen to get in the Navy. Peacetime requirements are now altered. Good, sound health is sufficient to qualify you for Navy service. But after a few short weeks of Navy life, you'll be in top-notch physical trend. These composite pictures show the progress in physical fitness made by the average recruit in his first six weeks after enlisting. That's what Navy training does. Throws a man's shoulders back, develops hard, powerful muscles, builds rugged, husky fighting men who can take it and dish it out. One Navy watchword is, fight to keep fit, Keep fit to fight. You'll live by that slogan in the fleet, with plenty of outdoor activity to keep you in fighting trim, ready for anything. For your shipmate, you'll have the finest group of men in the world, men you'll be proud to work with, live with, serve with. And to keep you ready for action, medical care by doctors trained in our top medical schools. 
the periodic dental attention with the most modern, complete equipment, both ashore and afloat. And for a Navy blue jacket, no doctor's bills at the end of the month. Fighting men need good food and plenty of it. And in the Navy, they get it. Meals that stick to a man's wrist. Plenty of beef, fresh fruit, green vegetables, coffee, dessert, and all in a typical day's menu. And for your sea going home, roomy clothes lockers, spring bunks, spotless washrooms and hot showers, the finest quarters of any service in the world. For your off-duty hours, recreation room with a piano, games, writing tables, and books of all kinds, from Shakespeare to Superman. And to fill your clothes locker aboard ship, $133 worth of uniforms, your first complete outfit given you absolutely free at the time you enlist. Clothes, fed, and housed by the highest standards of any fighting service in the world. That's the American Blue Jack. A strong, self-reliant unit molded by Navy training into a formidable part of America's great fighting machine. But the Navy's job is more than building health and physical toughness. To operate the great ships of the fleet, it takes not only strong hands, but trained hands. And that means the Navy must teach every recruit to be expert in some one of the Navy's 49 trades. Almost 100 Navy trade schools located throughout the country offer to more than 25,000 Navy men every month courses in basic and advanced training in some specialized trade. Whether you attend a trade school or not, you have every chance to become a highly skilled technical expert. For the biggest trade training center in the Navy today is still the fleet itself. At costly metal lathes, with intricate gun and torpedo mechanisms, in vast power and tool plants, Navy men become experts, masters at their trade. And look at the trades you have to pick from if you join the Navy. Here are just a few. Machinist, carpenter, photographer, printer, yeoman, pharmacist, radio man, electrician, doorkeeper, aviation machinist. And over here, bosun, gunner, signal man, torpedo man. 49 trades when you count them all. Almost every kind found in civilian life because it takes that many different kinds of trained men to keep our battle fleet afloat and ready for action. Here are some of these men at work. Electricians mates who wire and repair circuits, maintain AC and DC motors, keep open all shipboard communication systems. Carpenters mates who join and finish all shipboard woodwork using hand and power tools. Signal men who send and receive visual signals, read signal flags, and identify national ensigns of all warring countries. Metal smiths and molders who forge, weld, and solder all metals used aboard ships. Bolson's mates who do the canvas and tackle work aboard ships, understand navigation, handle the ship's boats. Radio men who transmit and receive messages between ship and shore, encipher and decipher code. Machinists mates who run the ship's engines, operate shipboard hoisting machinery, run the ship's machine shop. Water tenders and boiler makers who keep the boiler systems operating, maintain condensers, evaporators, feed water pipes. Storekeepers who keep pay accounts, handle stock records, stowage and procurement. Commissary stewards plan menus, estimate quantities of food needed, direct stowage, refrigeration, and preparation of food. Cooks and bakers who prepare the fleet's three squares a day, bake bread, cakes, and pastries. Yeomen who run the ship's office, type and take shorthand, keep the ship's records. 
Gunner's Maid, who supervise all phases of gunnery, handle ammunition, mines, depth charges. Torpedo Men, who service and launch the deadly tin fish from our destroyers and smaller craft. Photographers, who photograph and assemble aerial maps, manage photographic laboratories, take movies and stills under fire, which are vital to studies of naval strategy. Pharmacist Maid, who manage the ship's sick bay, administer simple medicine, and anesthesia. And the aviation rating, aviation machinists, ordnance men, metal smiths, radio men, aerographers, and aviation pilots, all enlisted men, all experts in their field. 49 trades in all, 49 Navy specialties. And in the expanding fleet today, you go ahead fast to higher pay grades. Over 50% of the men in today's Navy are petty officers. And over 75%, three quarters, get paid well above the minimum. And remember, Navy pay is practically all clear profit. No meals to buy, no rent to pay. And even in wartime, free entertainment, movies, smokers. Here's a typical young blue jacket coming up for his first month clear profit pay of $50. In the course of his Navy career, this is how he'll advance in rating and pay. In a few months, he'll be a seaman second class. Notice the added white stripe on his cuff. Now he's making $54 a month. Three stripes on his cuff means he's now a seaman first class with monthly pay of $66. Eligible now to pick from the Navy's 49 trade, he's decided to strike for the vital shipboard job of yeoman. And here's the big jump when he becomes a petty officer. See the single chevron and cross quills on his sleeve? That means he's a yeoman third class making $78 a month. Add another chevron, and he's a petty officer second class, earning $96 a month. Three chevrons, and he's a petty officer first class, monthly paying $114. And at last, the top of the ladder, he's a chief petty officer now. Notice the new uniform, the bar above his three chevrons, and that handful of bills, $138 every month, clear cash in hand, with living expenses already paid. In addition, if assigned to sea duty, he'll get a 20% increase, and a 50% increase if assigned to flight duty. And Navy men in all ratings get a substantial additional allowance every month for their wives, children, or other dependents. Here's a big point for you civilian trade experts, too. You trained machinists, electricians, carpenters, construction experts. With your skill, you may be enlisted as a petty officer right away. That means that immediately upon enlistment, you'll receive the uniform and monthly pay of a Navy trained expert. And from there, you can keep on going ahead as fast as your skill allows. For you younger men, this fellow here has a lot to say about your chance to become an aviation pilot, part of the picked enlisted personnel who fly the Navy's fighting wings. Many of the Navy's top flyers are enlisted men. Your chance to get up in the air, to get at the Japs and the Germans for individual daring and skill count pious may begin with your enlistment in the Navy tomorrow. As a Navy Blue Jacket, you will also have a chance to qualify for admission to the Naval Academy at Annapolis. Be one of the enlisted men picked from the fleet every year to receive a thorough college education absolutely free and to become a commissioned Naval officer. Almost unlimited opportunity. That's today's Navy your chance to move onward and upward in whatever direction your desire and ability take you. It's an opportunity that begins with your enlistment, and getting in the Navy is not so tough as you might think. If you're 17 or over, and not more than 50, you can probably qualify without any difficulty. Of course, if you're under 21, you need your parents' written consent to join. And because of living conditions aboard ship, five feet two is the minimum height allowed, and six feet four the maximum. Glasses need not disqualify you. Vision requirements in the Navy have recently been modified. 15-20th vision when reading with both eyes, and at least 6-20th in the weaker eye is all you now need. With good, sound, general physical condition, you'll pass the doctor's examination with flying color. So here's the first step. Go to your Navy recruiting station and talk it over with the officer in charge. Discuss things with your family. 
Tell them about Navy life and what it will mean to you. When you've passed all the requirements, you'll be sworn in by the officer at the recruiting station, a moment in your life you'll never forget. Then off to the training station, with all expenses paid by the Navy, and your first plunge into real Navy life, learning Navy tradition, regulation, terminology. Your boot training completed after eight weeks. If you qualify, you will go to a Navy trade school. Then away to sea for action, excitement, the warm feeling you'll have when you first meet your shipmates, the twice a month smile you'll wear when payday rolls around, and the kick you'll get when you receive your promotion to a rated petty officer. Your folks will be proud of you, proud of what you are doing in the Navy, and you couldn't ask for a bigger thrill than you'll get when you come home on leave in your trim Navy uniform. You'll know that through Navy training, you're building a successful career, following in the footsteps of other Navy Blue Jackets who have gone out into the world to win fame and high positions of authority. You'll know something else, too, something mighty important. You'll know that you, with your strength and your courage, are becoming part of a fighting tradition, the Navy tradition. Today, that's your privilege as a Blue Jacket, the chance to fight for victory and a lasting peace, the chance to join America's battle fleet and to write your name with those heroes of another day who in their time went out in fighting ships to defend and preserve our way of life. Right now in shipyards from Oyster Bay to San Diego, steel workers and riveters and draftsmen are building the strongest Navy the world has ever known. But to pilot every ship, to drive every turbine, to man every gun, yes, to pay back in blood Hitler and Japan's attempt to crucify love and hope and simple human charity, to do these things, the Navy must have more men. Men make the Navy. The Navy makes men. For those of you who want your chance to fight for liberty and to build your own future with new assurance of success, America's fleet is waiting, waiting for you. Thank you.